left India in 1947, the country's ministers were left with the daunting task of cajoling and forcing 562 princely states and a clutch of 12 provinces under British rule to join India. Then, in 1956, boundaries were redrawn along linguistic lines and 14 new states, including six union territories, were formed. The implicit belief that guided this exercise was that language governed culture. Between 1960 and 2000, 14 new states were added. On June 2, 2014, India's map underwent yet another revision. The Telugu-speaking state of Andhra Pradesh, the country's fifth largest by population, was chopped up to form Telangana. Spread across an area of 115,000 square kilometres, Telangana has become the 12th largest state and covers about two-fifths of the former Andhra Pradesh. A population of 35 million puts it ahead of some of India's neighbouring countries, like Afghanistan with 30 million, Nepal with 28 million, Sri Lanka with 20.2 million and Bhutan with 0.7 million. It will have 10 districts, whereas the new Andhra Pradesh has been reduced to two blocks, Coastal Andhra with nine districts and Rayalaseema with four. Proponents of Telangana argue that while it hauls in 43% of the state's revenues, only 30% of the total state expenditure falls into its lap. Telangana has traditionally been agriculturally focused, thanks, in the main, to 69% of the Krishna River and 79% of the Godavari running through it. However, the new state receives only 19% of the waters. For years, people from Telangana have mostly felt neglected but not any more. After the split was announced, it was the new Andhra Pradesh that was loath to lose Hyderabad, an IT hub and the state's main breadwinner. Although it accounts for only 8% of the state's population, a massive 40.6% of the sales tax and a whopping three quarters of the VAT collected in pre-split Andhra Pradesh came from Hyderabad. For now, as a hasty compromise, Hyderabad will continue as the joint capital of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh for the next decade. But will the split work? A study of recently formed states suggests that it will. In November 2000, within a space of 15 days, three new territories were created in the north. Chhattisgarh, now the 10th largest state, was split from the southeastern districts of Mujya Pradesh. Uttarakhand was carved out of Uttar Pradesh and Jharkhand from Bihar. Some have done better than others. On per capita income, all states showed a remarkable rise over a 10-year period beginning in 2000. Bihar, Chhattisgarh and Uttarakhand in particular grew faster than the national average. While literacy rates have improved across the board, they increased at a faster clip in Bihar, Jharkhand and Uttar Pradesh, compared with the rest of India. The Hindu nationalist Bhartiya Janata Party was in power when these states were formed, and it secured a thumping victory in these states in the 2014 elections. Now that it has swept back into power after a decade in opposition, could the BJP once again press ahead with the formation of yet more new states? If all existing demands are met... India will further add at least 21 new territories. And that might just be the right thing to do, especially for the BJP.